Earlier this week, on April 28th, the world learned that NASA astronaut Michael Collins passed away at the age of 90. The Apollo 11 astronaut who flew around the moon and helped to make the first ever moon landing possible passed away after a long battle with cancer his family shared. Now, today is going to be a little bit of a different episode of Space Chat. I'm going to be talking about Michael Collins, about what he was really like, what he did throughout his career, and what makes him such an incredible icon and inspiration for so many in space flight. So without further ado, let's talk about Michael Collins. Michael Collins was actually born in Rome, Italy, because his father was stationed there as a U.S. Army Major General. After moving to the United States, Collins would eventually enroll at West Point Military Academy where he earned his Bachelor of Science degree. He went on to join the U.S. Air Force where he completed flight training. In the Air Force, he was an experimental flight test officer, testing jet fighters, and he even learned how to deliver nuclear weapons. Throughout his time in the Air Force, he accumulated over 5,000 flight hours. But Everything changed in 1962 when Collins watched John Glenn make history by becoming the first American to ever orbit Earth. After John Glenn's flight, Collins applied to be an astronaut. But NASA had just seven astronauts with the Mercury program, the Mercury 7, and they were looking for two more for their upcoming Gemini program. However, Collins actually didn't make the cut for this next round of astronauts. It wasn't until next year in 1963 that Collins made it into NASA's third round of astronauts. He was hired for Gemini, which flew Earth orbiting missions and led spacewalks, which were very new for the agency and for spaceflight in general. For NASA's Gemini 10 mission in 1966, Collins served as a pilot, finally getting to space. The mission orbited Earth, and its purpose was to rendezvous and dock with two target vehicles, a newly launched booster and an old booster from Gemini 8. Collins piloted the flight seamlessly, performed two spacewalks, and became the first person to ever rendezvous two spacecraft in orbit, a skill that would seriously come in handy later with Apollo 11. Now, following the Gemini program, Collins helped with mission support for Apollo 8, which flew the first spacecraft to ever orbit the moon in 1968. For this mission, he communicated with the astronauts from Mission Control. Following his work supporting missions from the ground, Collins got the chance to fly a second and final time to space. In 1969, as many of us know, Michael Collins launched with his fellow astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin with Apollo 11 to the moon. His role? Command Module Pilot. For the Apollo lunar landing missions, there were two spacecraft for each mission, a lunar module and a command module. The lunar module is what the astronauts would take down to the surface on the moon and then back up. The command module would orbit the moon in the meantime, rendezvousing with the lunar module after they were done on the surface. So it was Michael Collins' job to orbit the moon while Neil and Buzz walked on the ground below. No easy feat. Uh, in fact, it was such a such an unbelievable challenge that it was possible that Neil and Buzz weren't going to make it back off the lunar surface. Uh, in, in fact, President Nixon even prepared a speech should this occur, and should Collins be the sole survivor of Apollo 11. Now, throughout this time orbiting the moon, Collins spent a whopping 21 and a half hours alone in the command module orbiting the moon. He was running system checks, uh, observing the moon, even observing Earth over the moon's horizon. Uh, however, while this was, I'm sure, isolating in many ways, there was a portion of this flight that was especially isolating. Uh, when the command module went behind the moon, it actually cut off its connection for communications with Earth. This was, this was something they expected and knew was going to happen, but it meant that Michael Collins was fully and truly alone in that command module. In fact, about this time, Collins wrote, I am alone now truly alone and absolutely isolated from any known life. I'm it. If a count were taken, the score would be three billion plus two over on the side of the moon and one plus God knows what on this side. Now, 
While the plan was for the two moonwalkers to rendezvous with Collins, as I mentioned, there was the chance it wouldn't happen. However, thankfully, the rendezvous went great, the astronauts made it home safely to Earth, and Apollo 11 was an incredible success. Uh, now, as I mentioned, Michael Collins was very much alone throughout that time in orbit and was the only one of the three astronauts to not walk on the moon's surface. For this reason, he was often dubbed the forgotten astronaut or the l loneliest man in the universe, things like that. However, despite these silly monikers, Michael Collins has remained an upbeat and wonderful, inspirational pillar of human spaceflight. Even today, he inspires people around the world with the work that he's done and the legacy that he's left behind. In fact, following his career at NASA, Collins went on to serve as director of the National Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C. He really helped to lift up human spaceflight and was a real advocate for space and space exploration. Uh, in 1974, he also wrote the book Carrying the Fire, An Astronaut's Journeys, about his experiences as an astronaut sharing that with the general public. It remains to this day an absolute classic and a must read for all space enthusiasts. And it really gives an up-close and honest look at what that time was like for him. Now, more recently, Collins has also been or had been very active over social media, sharing memories of his time at NASA, sharing new milestones in current spaceflight missions, talking about the future of our planet, science, and even the environment. In fact, just a few days ago on Earth Day, Collins tweeted a photograph of the moon with the caption, I am certain if everyone could see the Earth floating just outside their windows, every day would be Earth Day. There are few things more fragile or more beautiful than Earth. Let's work together and every day to protect our home. This was just a small glimpse at the life that Michael Collins lived and the legacy that he will leave behind. He has really cemented this incredible and positive presence in science and in spaceflight. And I'm sure that his legacy will only continue to inspire those who look to the stars, who want to explore, and who want to do daring and incredible things.